Hi all, today we are going to discuss about a time dilation. It is a very interesting topic in relation with a special theory of relativity. It is interesting and at the same time it is beyond our common sense also. Because this effect is significant at a relativistic speed. That is the speed which is comparable with the speed of light. That is when the objects are moving with a speed that is approaching to the speed of light 3 lakh kilometer per hour. Then that speed is known as the relativistic speed. There are two postulates in relation with the special theory of relativity. The first postulate is all the laws of physics have the identical form in all inertial frame of reference. The second postulate is about the constancy of the speed of light. According to the second postulate of special theory of relativity, the speed of light in vacuum remains constant. It is independent of the relative motion. The speed of the light in vacuum is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second with respect to the light source or with respect to the observer. It is independent of the relative motion. In our daily life, we are not dealing with the, the speed which is approaching to the speed of light. If I am moving in a car in this direction with a speed of uh, 30 km per hour, and another car is moving in opposite direction with a speed of 60 km per hour. What is the relative speed? That is 30 km per hour plus 60 km per hour. That is 90 km per hour. But if I am moving at a speed uh, that is approaching to the speed of light. Imagine I am moving in a spaceship with a speed of 60 percentage of the speed of light in this direction. That is 0.6c. And another one is moving in a spaceship in the opposite direction with a speed of 0.7c, that is 70 percentage of the speed of light. Then can we add that 0.7c and 0.6c? No. With respect to me or with respect to another person, the speed of the light is c, that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second only. Here, to keep the speed of the light as constant, some adjustment is required in distance and time because speed is distance travel divided by time taken. So to keep the speed as constant, the distance that is the length is adjusting in such a way that the length is contracting. At the same time, when the length is contracting, the time interval is increasing. This largening of the time interval to keep the speed of the light as constant is known as the time dilation. The decrease in the length, the contraction in the length, that is the length contraction that already we discussed in another video. So in this video, we can discuss about this time dilation. So time dilation means the lengthening of the time interval when the objects are moving at a relativistic speed. So to understand this concept here we can consider two inertial frame of reference. The first one is S frame of reference which is at a rest and the second frame of reference S dash is moving along the positive x direction with a relativistic speed v. Here we are considering two assumptions. The first one is axes are parallel. That is x axis is parallel to x dash axis, y is parallel to y dash and z is parallel to z dash axis. And the second assumption is initially that is at a time t equal to t dash equal to 0, the origin O and O dash coincide. Let a physical event takes place in S dash frame of reference. The physical event means it can be lightening of a bulb. It can be my lecture at this position I start a lecture after some time I end up it. Then, that time interval can be measured by two observers. One observer is in the S dash frame of reference and another one is in the S frame of reference. Let these two observers in S and the S dash frame of reference is measuring the time interval of a physical event takes place at this position in S dash frame of reference using their own identical synchronized clock. Let that physical event be the sounding of an alarm. 
for the observer in s frame of reference the alarm sound started at the t1 and it end at t2 and for the observer in s dash frame of reference the alarm started at t1 dash and let it end at t2 dash for the observer in s frame of reference the time interval of that alarm sound is t2 minus t1 the alarm started at t1 and it end up at t2 for the observer in s dash frame of reference the time interval is t2 dash minus t1 dash this time interval which is measured by the observer in the s dash frame of reference in which the event takes place at the same position is known as the proper time interval now we can find out the relation between this proper time interval and the observed time interval for that we can use the help of lorentz transformation equations we have discussed the lorentz transformation in one of the previous videos x dash equal to gamma into x minus vt y dash equal to y z dash equal to z and t dash equal to gamma into t minus vx by c square where x is the space coordinate t is the time coordinate the inverse lorentz transformation equation is t equal to gamma into t dash plus vx dash by c square what is gamma here gamma is a very important quantity that is 1 by root of 1 minus v square by c square using inverse lorentz transformation we can write the expression for t1 and t2 that is t1 is equal to gamma into t1 dash plus v x1 dash by c square and t2 is equal to gamma into t2 dash plus v x2 dash by c square on subtracting equation 2 minus 1 we will get t2 minus t1 as gamma into t2 dash minus t1 dash here this v x2 dash by c square minus v x1 dash by c square will cancel out because x1 dash equal to x2 dash equal to x dash this event takes place at the same position so to cancel out this space coordinate we are using the inverse lorentz transformations here in length contraction derivation we have used the lorentz transformation equations there we have measured the length of a scale at the same time there to cancel the time coordinate we have used the lorentz transformation equations here we are using the inverse tra lorentz transformation equations for the convenience to cancel out this space coordinates because this x1 dash and x2 dash are same it is the event takes place at the same position in s dash frame of reference but for an observer in s frame of reference these positions may not be the same but for an observer in s dash frame of reference in which he is measuring the time interval this position is same so here t2 minus t1 what is this t2 minus t1 that is delta t is equal to gamma into t2 dash minus t1 dash that is a proper time interval delta t dash what is gamma here 1 by root of 1 minus v square by c square so delta t is equal to 1 by root of 1 minus v square by c square into delta t dash where delta t is the observed time interval delta t dash is the proper time interval now this gamma is always greater than 1 because this root of 1 minus v square by c square is less than 1 v is less than c so this root of 1 minus v square by c square will be less than 1 or gamma is greater than 1 so if this gamma that is 1 by root of 1 minus v square by c square is greater than 1 that means this delta t is greater than delta t dash what is this delta t dash delta t dash is the proper time interval that is the time interval measured by the observer in s frame of reference is greater than the time interval measured by the observer in s dash frame of reference 
this lengthening of the time interval measured by the observer in s frame of reference is known as time dilation that is for an observer at a rest the moving clock appears to be slower so as a consequence of the second postulate of the special theory of relativity that is to keep the speed of the light as constant the lengthening of time interval takes place at a relativistic speed that is moving clock appears to go slow this effect that is moving clock runs slower compared to observers on clock at relativistic speed is known as time dilation if v is very small that is v is much less than the speed of light that is in our daily life then this gamma expression become one because this v is le much less than c so this v square by c square term can be neglected and this gamma expression become one then this delta t become equal to delta t dash that is we cannot observe this time dilation in our daily life but when the speed is approaching the speed of light that is at a relativistic effect the time can dilate this time dilation effect leads to a famous paradox you may have heard about the twin paradox let us imagine two twin brothers let uh, joshi and jomi these brothers are celebrating their 20th birthday on earth after their birthday celebration an adventurous jomi decides for a space trip he is traveling in a spaceship with a speed that is comparable with the speed of light so he took one year for his trip and after one year he returned back to earth to celebrate his 21st birthday then he is shocked to find his twin brother joshi as very aged this is a paradox only you can google it for further animations and all so that's all about the time dilation we have already discussed the numericals based on length contraction and time dilation in one of the previous video if you are interested you can watch that thank you bye bye